You may have already created a slider to be displayed on the landing page of your app using the page view widget. Now you want to display an indicator on top of it. A few dots indicating how many pages are there and which page is currently being viewed. In this video, I'm going to show you a few simple steps to create such an indicator. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to create a slider. I have created a separate video for that. I'll put the link in the description if you are interested in that. So at this moment, I'm going to start with this code that I already have where I have two files, main.dart and introslider.dart. Mm -hmm. The introslider.dart file has a widget called introslider where I'm using the page view widget to create a slider of three pages like this one. But I don't have an indicator and in this video, here I am going to show you how to create an indicator and add it here. Let's start by creating a new Dart file inside this lib folder. Let's name it indicator.dart. Inside this file, create a stateful widget. You can use this shortcut stful and then select this option to create a stateful widget. You have to enter the name, so let's name it indicator. And to be able to access these classes, import the file material.dart. Take your cursor to one of these missing classes and hit Alt Enter and select material.dart from the menu. So by default this state class returns an instance of the container widget. I'll add a height and a color to see how does it look on the screen. Now inside the file intro slider, I have this widget row to display these two buttons. I'll add the indicators above this row. So here I'll wrap this row widget by a column and to the list of children before row I'll add an instance of the new widget indicator. Now if you save the changes you will notice these buttons and on top of the buttons you will notice the widget that we have created for indicator but they move towards the top because we have enclosed them inside a column and column by default occupies the complete available vertical space. To bring them to bottom, we shall reduce the size of column, the height of column to the minimum required space. And for that, pass main axis size dot mean to the property main axis size of the column widget. Save and this comes to the bottom. Now our indicator widget depends on the changes of the page view that is inside our intro slider widget. So we have to pass the information of the changes from this widget intro slider to the indicator widget. And for that we are going to add a page controller to the page view of our intro slider. And for that create an instance of the class page controller and pass this instance to the property controller of the page view widget. Now inside the indicator class, inside the widget indicator, create an instance page controller to hold the controller that will be passed from the intro slider widget and initialize it through the constructor. Now again inside the intro slider widget while creating the instance of indicator, pass this controller. Now with help of this page controller instance, we shall make our indicator widget listen to the changes of this page view. So whenever we slide the pages, we'll make our indicator widget rebuild its UI to reflect the changes. Now open the file indicator.dart and inside this state class, implement the callback function in its state. Inside this function, we are going to add a listener to the instance of page controller that has been passed from the intro slider widget. And this instance is inside the widget class. Thus, we have to use this widget reference to access, access it from the state class. So, call widget.controller.addListener. And to this function addListener, we have to pass an implementation of a function that will be executed when something changes on the controller. For that, let us create a function separately. Let's name it handle changes. Inside this function, we are simply going to call the set state method to rebuild the UI. So whenever something changes inside the controller, then this function handle changes will be called and the as we are calling set state, it will inform the framework 
to rebuild the UI. Now pass a reference of this function to this function add listener and we are also going to remove this listener inside the callback function this pose. Now you can add a print statement here to check whether all that we have done till now is working or not. So whenever we slide the pages this string should get printed on the console and it is working. So we can proceed to create the layout for the indicator. We shall display the dots here. Now let's remove this color of the container and add the property child. To this property child we are going to pass an instance of the list view. Let's create the list view with the constructor builder and to this constructor builder we have to pass a builder function to the parameter item builder using which we are going to create the layout of the individual items of this list in our case the dots of the indicator and to the property item count we have to pass the number of items to be displayed we are going to pass this value while creating an instance of this widget indicator inside the intro slider widget so at the top create a field of type integer to hold the item count let us name it item count and initialize it through the constructor. Now inside this constructor builder to the property item count pass widget dot item count. And open the file intro slider dot draft and while creating an instance of indicator let us pass 3 as the item count. Now let us create a function for creating the individual items of the indicator the dots. Let us name it create indicator elements. We shall pass the index from this list view and we are going to return a widget from this function. Inside return an instance of the container widget. We are going to specify the height, width and color of the container and for that we are going to create some variables. First create a double for the width. Let us initialize it to 10. Let us create another for height and make it 10. We are going to create an instance of material color and pass an initial color. Let's pass colors.gray. Next we are going to add an if statement to check whether the index of the current page of the page view is equal to the index being passed to this function. If it is true then we are going to change the height width and color of the container. So we are going to change the values of these variables w width height we are going to make them 15 and we are going to change the color to blue gray. Now assign these values to the property width height and color of the container widget. Inside the item builder function add a return statement and call this function create indicator elements and pass this index. Now if you save the changes you will notice the indicators appearing on the screen but they does not look the way we want them to look. The first thing that we are going to do is to change the scroll direction of the list view. For that pass axis dot horizontal to the property scroll direction of the constructor list view builder. Next we are going to pass true to the property shrink wrap. Otherwise the list view will try to occupy the complete horizontal space available to it. Let us add some margin around the individual items of the indicator, individual dots. So to this widget container for the property margin pass age inset dot all and pass a value. I am going to pass 5 here. Now if you save the changes you will notice the indicator is working but when one element expands it pushes the other two. And to fix this we are going to wrap the container widget by an instance of the widget called size box and we are going to specify a height and a width. Also wrap the container by an instance of the center widget and now reload the app. And now this looks good. 
but if you want to make it a little smooth then replace this container by the widget animated container and you have to pass the duration for the animation pass an instance of the class duration to the property duration and while creating this instance to the constructor for the property millisecond pass the value of the duration let's pass 300 or maybe 200 you can play around with it and see how does it look now save the changes and here we have a smooth good looking but simple page view indicator 